Hello, everybody, and welcome to one Wellness Wednesday Inspiration. Uh, my name is Fernanda Torres, and I am a nurse practitioner, and we are here to talk about uh, thyroid high, um, low thyroid disorder, hypothyroidism. And um, we are having a little bit of problems connecting with the sound of Dr. Linda Marcus. So while we wait until um, she's able to connect, I want to invite everybody, if you know of anybody that has a hypothyroidism or low thyroid disorder, please invite them over, have them come and join the conversation. We're going to be talking about the traditional, um, traditional versus the functional medicine approach at treating hypothyroidism or low thyroid disorder. It's going to be uh, very informative. Please invite anybody that you know may be interested in the topic. And hopefully Dr. Linda will be able to connect. She is the functional medicine specialist and I will be bringing all of the information in regards to the traditional um, medicine and the approach at treating hypothyroidism. So please invite everybody. Again, we're waiting for Dr. Linda to connect. Um, unfortunately, the sound was not working and we have been trying to troubleshoot for a little while and I had to go live. Otherwise, they were going to cancel the, the, uh, the program. And let's see. Before we get started, I want to give her a few more minutes. Hopefully she is able to connect. Just bear with us, hopefully. And I'll give her a few more minutes. If she is not able to connect right away, I'll get started uh, talking about uh, hypothyroidism, what it is, the signs and symptoms, and uh, just giving an overview of uh, this very common, very extremely common uh, thyroid disorder. So again, if you know of anybody that may be interested in the topic, please let them know. Please bring them over, have them join. It's going to be informative. And I haven't heard from Dr. Linda yet. All right, so let me get started with thyroid disorder. I'm going to give you guys an overview. Uh, hypothyroidism or low thyroid disorder is a condition. It's a very, very common condition. Uh, it affects primarily women. And it usually starts about 40 years of age. That's when I start seeing more of it. Although uh, guys can still have it, it's more common in females. So usually um, it, it is an autoimmune disorder. The most common type of low thyroid, it's an autoimmune disorder, but there is more uh, reasons for more types of hypothyroidism. So Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune disorder. And I was so excited and I'm still so excited to hear Dr. Linda's take on these. I'm ready to learn about her approach uh, because I know it's totally different than what I do for thyroid disorders. Uh, but basically the thyroid going just to the bare, um, like to the basics, the thyroid is a gland and the gland uh, sits in the neck. And when people have low thyroid disorders, they can experience a variety of symptoms all over the body because the thyroid regulates basically things all over the body as well. So common symptoms for low thyroid disorder um, would be depression, would be weight gain, would be constipation, would be dry skin, um, so everything, what I tell my patients usually is when you have low thyroid or hypothyroidism, everything goes down. You feel kind of like it, just everything's dragging in a way in the body. And that's kind of how I explain it. But again, it can, it can affect everything in your body. Um, your skin, your hair gets dry, your skin gets dry, and um, just overall not feeling well. 
Now, the lab results, it's, a, it's an interesting thing with thyroid. The lab results are usually inverse to what it means. What I mean by that is if you go and get your blood work uh, done, uh, checking for thyroid, and there is um, a bunch of different thyroid tests that we check for, but if you go and get your blood work checked, uh, and there is one test uh, that is the most common probably ordered in traditional medicine is the TSH, TSH. And when the TSH is high, that means that the thyroid is low. So it works the opposite way. When the level is high, the thyroid is low, once again. So uh, it's it's kind of common belief that if you go to the to get your blood work done and you have a high number, that means that there is that you're high on whatever it is. For example, the cholesterol, right? Um, cholesterol is a perfect example. People say, oh, my cholesterol is high. Um, I need to work on diet. I need to work on exercise or whatever it is. Well, with this is the opposite. If it's high, that means that the thyroid is low. Okay, so common approaches for traditional medicine, um, for me specifically, and I'm sure some providers do it different ways, but for me, and I just received a message, let's see. Okay, so she's restarting her computer. Hopefully she can join us shortly. Um, but the treatment on my end um, kind of varies. I usually don't start medication right away. If the level is borderline or it's just slightly up, um, I usually start medication. If, if that's the case, I just repeat the blood work in a few, you know, a couple of months and make sure that it is high to confirm it. And also, um, if it is kind of borderline, I just kind of watch and wait with, uh, you know, before I decide to start uh, medications. This is considering that the patient may not be symptomatic. Symptomatic meaning that you're having symptoms, that you're experiencing uh, weight gain, that you're experiencing changes in your mood, that you're experiencing any dryness in your skin, that you're experiencing a lot of constipation, um, et cetera. So, if the blood work is really high, meaning your um, the results are you know not not questionable in a way, then I will start medication uh, from you know from the get go from the first abnormal result. Again, granted that it's very high, um, and that's exactly what I want to have Dr. Linda's input and intake into how her approach differs. I know she is. Um, less in the medication and i'm very for at least for hypothyroidism and that's kind of like my my one type approach for this condition either kind of watch and wait or let's start the medication and control it now for anybody that may be listening to it if you oh i think she's joining let's see hi can you hear hi. me linda can you hear me yes. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, awesome. Great. Nice. Oh my gosh. I was I was thinking that you were not going to be able to join us. I'm here. <laughs> this yes. is one of my favorite, favorite topics. I love the thyroid. I just so but I was I was able to to, to listen. So I was kind of giving my overview. Uh, I'm glad that you were able to listen. So just kind of my approach and just a little bit of background on symptoms and what it is and just kind of uh, uh, an overview, but I'm sure you have tons and tons of information for us. Yeah, I was just, I was kind of catching like how you, how you work with, um, with patients. I mean, I know, I don't know, I wasn't able to hear if you were able to go over the, the stats with some of the, the numbers with, you know, how many Americans are actually, um, you know, where 20 million Americans are affected by the thyroid. Most of them are women and not men. And I think I kind of heard you go over the symptoms, everything from depression, weight loss, resistance, constipation, lots of digestive issues, elevated cholesterol levels. So a lot of times a Somebody will go and the dog, you know, they're tired and they're overweight and they're depressed and they they check their numbers and their cholesterol numbers are elevated and they're like, oh, let's put you on a statin. But that's not really the statin's not going to fix anything, you know, mm -hmm. so thyroid issues. There's so many um, symptoms when women have thyroid issues. So mm -hmm. um, 
I think it's just, it's really overlooked and it's one of the most mismanaged conditions out there just because there, there are so many symptoms that can mimic other problems, you know, like I'm tired. They're mm -hmm. like, okay, well maybe that's just stress. Yeah, maybe it is. Oh, my cholesterol level's elevated. Okay, I'm losing my hair. Okay, well maybe you're stressed out or you look at your nails and you see ridges and you're having you're tired all the time because you can't you know you're you're sleeping eight to ten hours but you're still exhausted mm -hmm. so those are a lot of the common symptoms and then they go to the doctor of course the doctor orders the labs and i want to kind of just go over some of the labs that you know that that we both order but traditionally um as you were mentioning um with what the hormones do how you know the hypothalamus and the talks to the pituitary gland, which talks to the thyroid, which is right here. It's a butterfly shaped, um, you know, little gland right here that impacts every single cell in the body. So we better make sure that that's working right. Um, but go ahead. I want to, I want to kind of listen into what else you were sharing and, and I'll kind of put in my two cents as far as, um, I know that in traditional care, you have to follow certain protocols, the way you manage patients. And I think that's the biggest probably frustration even for yourself versus um, how I kind of um, you know, approach the care. Mm -hmm. So if, a, uh, if someone comes into you, know, comes to the hospital and says, you know, I'm having these issues. I mean, how do you go about an approach? What labs do you order and what do you look at? So the uh, primary labs that I ordered checking for thyroid would be the TSH, T3, and T4. Mm -hmm. um, and then depending on those results, I go further into doing antibody testing, which I think it's different than what you do on your end. I think you do everything at once, and I'll let you talk um, do you about do that. Free do you do free T3 in total? or do? You yes, free T3 okay. in total. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, and based on the results, if it is very high, if it's very abnormal, I do uh, start the medic medication uh, replacement right away. If it's abnormal, if it's borderline or depending on the results or how symptomatic the patient is, I will do the watch and wait. Mm -hmm. And where I was kind of, um, when I left off, uh, when you came in, I was talking about if patients are on a medication already, the approach that I have is every two months, uh, about every two months, I do repeat lab work to make mm -hmm. sure that the uh, thyroid is getting uh, at a regular or at a normal level. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you get a medication and they, you know, they will say, you know, we, we need to recheck in X amount of time. Usually the recommended amount of time to recheck for me would be six to eight weeks, no less and no more than that. Uh, because if it is still not at goal, we need to, you know, um, perhaps change the dose or readjust or change of plan, change of medication altogether, depending on how the situation may be. And if it is normal, uh, then we just kind of keep at the same dose and, and monitor um, depending on how stable every three months, every six months and so on and so forth. So in traditional care, how is... Um is there a diet that your patients are supposed to follow or are there any guidelines that traditional pharmacological care follows as far as when it comes to the thyroid? Because if a person, and, and I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of, I mean, I do mm -hmm. and I don't, but I want our audience to know um, what is the traditional care or in, and, and why, as you're saying, um, you know, you do recheck, which you probably do more than most doctors. They'll just prescribe or nurse practitioners um, will just prescribe and they'll check them in six or 12 months and just rerun labs, you know, maybe a year later. Mm -hmm. But do, are there any recommendations with diet or anything? Nothing that was given to me on uh, on training and nothing that has been ever really discussed necessarily uh, on on training on or at you know, at the workplace, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually looking at different articles and different um, up to date and some other places that I normally use for patient uh, advice or, you know, for guidelines or whatnot. And there is not much uh, recommendations for traditional medicine in uh, treating disorders of the thyroid. So that's mm -hmm. pretty amazing. And I, yeah. I did not really find much. 
Yeah. So the, uh, the, the interesting and just kind of the physiology, as I tell people, you know, there's a connection. However, what's really important to know that your thyroid makes the T4 and the T3, and that's what we test for. However, it makes a lot of T4, and that's what most doctors prescribe um, are T4 hormones. They don't rarely, rarely do they um, prescribe T3, but T3 is the active one. That's the one that um, is, I always say, it sets the metabolic rate. You do have a lot of T4. It could be up to 93% T, um, T4, and you only have a little bit of T3, but T3 is the one that gets you going. However, what's beautiful in the body is that that T4 gets converted into T3 and it happens in the liver and in the gut. And so you've got to make sure that your liver and gut health are dialed in because 60% of that inactive T4 gets converted into T3 in the, in the liver. And of course, you have to be you have to have, um, like I said, a health, a healthy liver. And then you have another percentage, like 20% is going to be converted in the gut from T4 to T3, as long as you have a healthy gut. Most people don't have a healthy liver. Most people don't have a healthy gut. So even if a practitioner gives them the T4, we're kind of expecting, oh, it's going to be converted into three. But how do you know if, you've, if you don't check the liver? Um, and you don't ask about diet and you don't check the gut. So that's the biggest challenge that I have seen. And you also need to, um, you know, it, it's very dependent on iodine and tyrosine. Mm -hmm. So that's why diet is important because well, what if they're not getting enough iodine? What if they're not getting enough tyrosine in their diet? That's the, your hormone production is very much dependent on that. So that's really overlooked. So if we're giving you a T4, let's say they're giving you a T4 hormone, and as long as TSH looks good, your T3 looks good, or T4, which sometimes doctors very rarely check T3, they're like, oh, you're good. But you're like, but I don't feel right. I'm still tired. They're like, okay, let's, let's increase the dosage. And they keep increasing the dosage. And if they keep increasing the dosage every single year, that's a sign that it's not your thyroid. It's probably your gut or your liver. Mm -hmm. And I always see that most of the time it's the gut. When you fix the gut, absorption increases. So you actually see that you need less of the thyroid hormone. And as you were talking earlier, too, about um, I check um, TSH, free T3, free T4, thyroid antibodies. Um, um, I don't know if you check reverse T3 at all. Um, I know a lot of traditional doctors, mm -hmm. practitioners don't um, measure that. And it's very important because if reverse T3 is high, that's blocking T3. And T3 is the gas pedal. T3, reverse T3 goes up when actually you're getting too much T4, believe it or not, because that can be a stressor to the body and reverse T3 goes up when there's, when it's a stress related, but it also could be um, um, heavy metal toxicities as well. So that can be a challenge. That's why you have to check reverse T3 as well, because um, you just can't look at TSH, T4, you also have to make sure that you look at ferritin and iron because your thyroid depends on that too. And if those levels are low, that thyroid conversion is not going to happen. And that's the biggest challenge that we have to look at everything because traditionally just a CMP is run, a lipid panel is run, um, TSH, maybe um, free T4, and that's about it. What about vitamin D? What about iron? What about TIBC? What about ferritin? Those are all important as well when it comes to the thyroid. And then digging into the gut, as we talked about, you know, your gut health is so important for that T4 to that T3 conversion. And if you're not, if your gut is not dialed in, you're not getting maximal um, absorption from the foods and the nutrients that you're, um, that you're eating. So how often do you see Hashimoto's or um, positive antibodies on tests that you run? Um, I would probably see it in about, uh, guesstimating about 70, 80% of the time. Yeah. And most of the time it's females. 
Mm -hmm. Of course. Absolutely. And a lot of it because, you know, our hormones tend to fluctuate a lot. And the most common times that you see um, a lot of thyroid issues are usually, I always say it's right after a woman has a baby, when a woman's going through menopause, and when there's a major stressful event. Those are the three times that I really see a lot of thyroid issues. And because of our estrogen levels, you know, going up and down because of the cycle, you know, that's why women have more of a tendency of um, that fluctuating a lot. Um, and as far as like, even by the time, even if a, a doctor practitioner checks thyroid antibodies and a person is not testing positive, you can't rule out Hashimoto's because if they still have a lot of the symptoms, you know, because a lot of the times they don't test positive to almost 10 years later, which okay. is insane. Wow. You know, and it's just like, and, and a lot of times most people will have Hashimoto's, they have an autoimmune condition and they don't even know it because it's the progression of it. So the standard of care now is really, um, I mean, the scope of practice, the way a lot of doctors are like, okay, then we'll do, we'll do a scan, you know, we'll, we'll see and we'll look to, um, to check what the, the thyroid looks like. You know, yes, there, there's various ways, but we have to learn that when it comes to the thyroid, unfortunately, we're, tr we're treating um, people based on numbers and not necessarily as a person. That's where the biggest mistake is. A person knows their body and they say, you know, doc, you know, or nurse, you know, they, they talk to you and they're like, I just don't feel right. But yeah, your labs are normal. It's just like, I know something is just not right. It's mm -hmm. time to go do some more detective work. As I say, you know, we're like detectives or health detectives where we're going to find what is causing this problem. What is the root problem? Because that's one of the most challenging. And I love the thyroid because of um, in, in the family, there, there, have, there are thyroid issues. And I was able to see that, pick that up on family members when they were just teenagers and wow. had, had outrageous thyroid numbers. Traditionally, doctors would have not checked that individual. And they were up in like the 800s, which is ridiculous. So it's just like, wow. Um, so with traditional care that, that that is one of the challenges um mm -hmm. because you're in that type of practice you know how do you how do you what do you do to recommend so that our listeners know how do i talk to my practitioner mm -hmm. you're very flexible you're very open but how do you talk to your practitioner because obviously everybody can't come see us <laughs> you know um or some people just say well i want to meet with somebody in person well most of all my appointments now are video or our video or virtual so um i'm not seeing a whole lot of patients in person I, I it's just like they can communicate with me via video chat but in your neighborhood you know how would they talk to you about that in regards to um pursuing if there's a possibility that hey i have hashimoto's which is an autoimmune condition which means that my thyroid is being attacked and that cause that attack is being caused by the food that i'm eating mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so most of the time when patients come in with concerns for thyroid it's usually because of their family history most patients uh, that come in say, you know what, my mom got diagnosed when I was when she was my age. So now I, I want to get tested because I'm concerned that I may have it. Very, very few times would a patient come in and say, I want to have my thyroid test based on the symptoms that I'm having. And this is because the thyroid can have so many symptoms like we yeah. talked about, right? So patients would come in and say, I'm having horrible constipation. I'm having such a hard time going to the bathroom. Please give me a laxative, right? So they're asking for something to relieve the symptoms, not uh, kind of asking you to diagnose the problem. And if you don't ask anything else, then it's very easy to miss something like thyroid, right? If you're, if the only complaint is constipation, for example, I think we talked last week, wasn't, uh, or two weeks ago about depression. And how when I was training, one of the things that my uh, collaborating physician said to me was, you never want to be the, the provider who misses a thyroid uh, problem because mm -hmm. of depression. 
So always, always, always check thyroid. So that was ingrained in me. And ever since the beginning of my practice, that's something that I check automatically for any depression or anxiety patient, right? But going back to it's going back to the symptoms, it's so easy to miss it if you're not thinking thyroid all the time. Uh, something that I've done basically for most of my females is I just check it automatically every time uh, there is the, the yearly comes in. I check thyroid, I check, check vitamin D, I check vitamin B12, I check all these things uh, automatically every year because I don't want to miss it. And because many times the symptoms are not present uh, when the condition is still kind of mild. Mm -hmm. So I check that automatically and um, many times, well, not many times, actually very few times the patients would say, I don't want that. I, I don't want to have things tested. I just, you know, I'd rather not. Mm -hmm. Most of the times they're, you know, sure, if there is something that can be wrong with me, please, let, you know, find out. Um, so that's kind of my approach is just checking uh, mm -hmm. automatically every year for most of my female patients unless they refuse. Um, and then, of course, based on symptoms, uh, getting to the bottom of would your symptom, you know, would it, would it mean that you have thyroid problems or is it something completely, completely different? Mm -hmm. What I'm lacking is that communication with the God and what you were explaining. That's mm -hmm. amazing. And that's, it makes so much sense. It's so mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. With the gut, especially, I mean, uh, gut health has also been one of my, I mean, I love working with women and the hormones the gut, I'm really passionate about that as well, because as Hipp Hippocrates said, all disease begins in the gut. And we know about that brain gut connection. And, and um, even just a baby, if a baby is not, you know, if they're, they're colicky, it's like, okay, that's a gut issue, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, and it's just like, um, even a lot of these kids with AD, um, ADD, ADHD, even autism, I guarantee any child that is autistic, I more than 99% sure that I will find something in their gut. We work on their gut, we fix their gut. I'm sure we're going to see we're going to see some huge changes on that. So when it comes to the gut and I know we've gone over even diet but just kind of like, you know, I told people just eat real food. Eat food that you recognize. You recognize chicken, you recognize beef, you recognize fish, you recognize broccoli, you recognize tomatoes, lettuce. You know, your, your food that doesn't need, you don't need to um, see if it has a label and recognize that, you know, unless it's frozen. Okay, if it's frozen, um, sweet potatoes, just make sure that, okay, it's only sweet potatoes in there. You know, if it's frozen green beans, it's only green beans. It's not all this other junk in there. Um, and then the biggest thing, the, the, the biggest offender with the thyroid, believe it or not, are going to be your grains and your gluten, which is your wheat, your oats. Oats are high cross-contamination. So even though they're not really um, um, gluten, but it is wheat, oats, rye, and barley. So, and a lot of people are told, oh, just eat um, oatmeal for breakfast, you know, get your cholesterol levels, it's got fiber, but there's a lot of cross-contamination with that. And there's a lot of what's called um, molecular mimicry where one thing looks like another. So the body will respond in a negative way to that. And it's the same thing like with the thyroid, you know, you, we need iodine. And when we're most breads and a lot of people eat breads, they have bromide in there. OK. And if we go back to like just basic chemistry in school, you remember iodide, you know, bromide, fluoride, how they're all in that little end part of the um your chart, periodic chart, right? Do you remember that from chemistry? Mm -hmm. Well, they almost all look alike. And so with the thyroid, what do we need? We need that iodine uptake. There's studies that have shown that the fluoride and the bromide are like, they're like the competition with that iodine. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, your T4 to T3 conversion we start to have some issues there. So one, you're looking at the foods. Two, you're looking at stress. Um, stress, of course, will interfere with your T4 to T3 conversion. Stress we talked about when your cortisol levels go up. Also, when your insulin levels go up, those are interfering with that T4, T3 um, conversion. 
So it's not just looking at one thing, it's looking at the whole picture. You ask, what is your gut like? What is um, you know, di digestion? Do your stools, do they float? Do they sink? Do you go every single day? You know, do they smell or what color are they? You know, we, we check babies that way, but we need to look at ours. The very classic, as you were talking earlier about symptoms, depression, they're losing their hair, their hair is dry, they, their skin um, is really dry, their nails are brittle, they have little um, um, ridges in their nails, you know, they're losing the hour third of their eyebrows, their feet are cold at nighttime, you know, it's hard. it's summer and they're still cold, you know, they're just, they're just slow, they're, they're, they're like they're in brain fog all the time, so when you start to tie everything together, it's like, there's more to this doc. There's more to this. And, and the gut is a huge, huge indicator. If if as practitioners, healthcare providers, we were only to focus on the gut for four weeks, we would see so many radical changes. It'd be unbelievable. Unbelievable. Half the people in the hospital would probably not have to be there. Uh -huh. Doctor visits would go way down. So, um, you know, that's why it's just like I, I loved the thyroid and um, and I get, you know, I'm testing patients frequently and sometimes they ask me and so, so, well, my doc doesn't want to check this. I'm like, OK, well, then, you know, we can order the labs. You just pay out of pocket. Mm -hmm. is, your, is your health worth one hundred dollars for you to spend an extra hundred dollars for you to say to save you possible a year or two years of being tired, of being exhausted, of trying to figure out and 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 not knowing what's wrong, what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. You know, it just comes back to yeah, the, the do no harm to your body. So we have to take full responsibility that I'm going to eat good food to nourish my body. I'm going to think right, you know. I'm going to move and so forth. So. It, it just really comes back down to the responsibility of the patient, but being able to communicate with the doctor as, you know, hey, this is a, we're, we're a team here and I want to win. <laughs> so what do we need to do to win? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me ask you something that I'm so curious. So mm -hmm. let's say I'm seeing a patient on my end and the patient has hypothyroidism and on replacement, let's say the patient is on the most common maybe for the listeners would be levothyroxine. So the patient's taking replacements every morning and the blood work is, let's say, at around, around four. And she wants a second opinion and she goes and sees you um, without, I'm not recommending any dietary. I'm just giving the medication and rechecking the labs every two months, like we said mm -hmm. before. So how, how do you, how do you take a patient from where I kind of leave her off and then kind of take it from the next level yeah. to the next level? Yeah. The first thing I would do, of course, is clean up their diet. As we talked about, it's just like keeping it to more a paleolithic keto template. Um, it's more a dairy free keto template, you know, with, um, I would say three, I would just say the three servings of vegetable of, um, of clean proteins, whether it's fish, chicken, turkey, of course, trying to get um, beef, trying to get the, the, the cleanest that you can without the hormones. Okay. The deck of always go by it's a size, your serving size is a deck of cards, fish, it's checkbook. Okay. And then I would say, let's shoot for five to seven cups of leafy green vegetables and maybe add some cruciferous vegetables. And if the cruciferous vegetables bloat you, then cook them. Because that already tells me that, hey, you have some digestive issues. And, you know, have them like a couple servings of um, like fruit, berries or low sugar. They can have a starchy vegetable, even like squash, or they can have like sweet potatoes. I would just have them do just really basic stuff like that and um, optimize their digestion with, um, I, you know, I have my patients take hydrochloric acid and enzymes because, you know, we know that a lot of PPIs are prescribed and it's, we have a deficiency. Most of us, um, we don't have enough hydrochloric acid to, to break down um, the protein. And you also need hydrochloric acid to um, for the liver and gallbladder to work properly, but for the pancreas to start secreting enzymes to for proper digestion. So just by getting the gut dialed in, when you're removing the foods that possibly are interfering with how the thyroid is working, too, now you're giving the body good food and you're trying to optimize digestion. 
it's nearly impossible to help a patient. Um, I would I would have to just say I'm going to put it out there. It's going to be impossible to help a patient optimize their thyroid without looking at and addressing their gut. It's just going to be impossible. I have not seen that in my practice, and I've been doing this for a long time. And if we don't fix the gut, we're not going to get anywhere because wow. we have to we have to look at um, kind of at as as it as the gas tank. You're putting in the best gas in your car. The gas tank is your gut, but it's got holes in it. You're like, yeah, but I'm putting premium fuel in here. It's like, yeah, but you've got you got some damage in that that tank, the gut. We got to fix that, <laughs> and that's where more extensive testing comes in. And I'm not really sure that I mean I know the testing that I do in my practice. I use. Um, I do a lot of functional medicine testing where practitioners, we use more of the up-to-date um, cutting edge testing that is available. And um, I use what's called a, a GI map. So um, I've had great success. I mean, that's how I monitor myself. Also, it, is it pricey? Yes, it gets a little bit pricey, but I always look at it. If I have four ball tires in my car and I say I don't have money, and that's my way to work. I'm going to find a way to get new tires on my car because I have to go to work. So I have to find a way to fix my body because this is my vehicle. This is my house that I'm in 24 mm seven. -hmm. And it's going to be, this is what I'm going to be and have for the next 10, 15, 20 years. I'm curious about something. Mentioning diet, you mentioned a lot of meat products. Mm -hmm. So what would you recommend if a patient's a uh, vegetarian or vegan? That's really a tough one because um, th that's one of the things that's the hardest to deal with. When it comes to working with the gut, I'm like, okay, you you can do fish, you know, um, If they're not, and, and even um, like eggs, eggs can be one of the perfect foods. However, it can also be one of the worst foods for a person that's a thi that has a thyroid issue. Um, when it comes to with working with vegetarians, it, it is hard. Uh, I'll be very honest with you. It's really hard to be healthy if you're a vegetarian. I've been a vegetarian. And I was the sickest when I was, I was the sickest I was in my entire life when I was a vegetarian. And I thought I was a really good vegetarian, you know, mm -hmm. um, and did the vegan and did the raw food and everything. And um, it, it was it was really hard um, in, in working with that. So what I would just recommend would be anything from even using like bone broth. Um, I love the bone broth because very healing for the gut. Even they might have to take liver pills. Um I'm just, it's just really, really difficult. And I would have to gauge a lot on their testing and see what their, their gut is and um, an optimized digestion. Okay. Okay. It makes sense. It makes mm -hmm. sense. Now, do you see that by changing all these diet and if the patient really tunes in with the gut and they, you know, they um, make all these changes, <clears throat> they make all these changes in the diet, How how common would it be for a patient to be able to get off of medication altogether? It depends on the patient. Now, if someone has had their thyroid removed um, and it's impossible to remove the entire thyroid, you're still going to have some tissue. It's it's still producing less T4, T3. They're going to have to be on something. If someone's had cancers, have had their thyroid removed, half their thyroid removed, more than likely, they're going to have to be on medication the rest of their life. That's just how it is. However, if there's a person that comes in and they have hypothyroid, uh, maybe even some that have had Hashimoto's, I've seen patients completely get off their medication. Is it possible? Yes. How easy is it? Um, it's, not, it's not as easy as we think because the, the, the driving factor and a thyroid health and why it's not working properly is going to come down to stress. It's going to be the physical, chemical, or the emotional. Mm -hmm. And we haven't even got into that, but um, because there's even chemical stressors from environmental toxins, heavy metals, everything from, from um, women having breast implants, from the dental work that we've had done in our mouth to vaccines that we've had 
to what if we're a painter and we're painting all day? What if we work with our hands and we're working with oils and we're, we're absorbing all that? Well, that's putting stress on the liver. The liver's got to convert that T4 to T3. So it's looking at that entire picture. It's not as simple. Oh, let's give them, let's give them level thyroxine. It's only a T4, you know? And if they had their thyroid removed, you have to have that T4, T3 combo. Mm -hmm. You just do. And, and I have not seen people do well when they're just given a T4. It's very difficult. They're tired a lot of the times, especially if they haven't done the gut work, you know? So mm -hmm. that's the biggest challenge. But thank God there's people like you and I that can direct them and guide them in the right way. Um, because a lot of people try to figure this out themselves. And I'm like, it's not as easy as you think, you know? And, and doctors aren't always gonna be running the labs that you want. so. It's really about working together with someone that can help you get your desired results. And like I said, because there's other areas connected that are impacting your thyroid that maybe you're not even aware of. It could be the, the EMFs. There's so much out there because we have all these environmental toxins that also contribute to the chaos <laughs> with our hormones. Wow. Wow. So bottom line for certain patients, they will have to be on medication replacement for the rest of their life. But for some other patients that have had uh, autoimmune hypothyroidism or your body's attacking yourself, and that's the type of uh, thyroid that you have mm -hmm. based on changes in lifestyle, based on decreasing stress and uh, eating healthier and everything, there may be a, a, an opportunity of an option uh, for patients to get off of medications, depending on how well they're doing in other areas, uh, gut and stress. Yeah, yeah. With the Hashimoto's, it's difficult. I find that I've seen men get been, they're able to get off um, the medication and a lot of them can manage their, their hypothyroid um, or their um, Hashimoto's, which is um, an autoimmune condition. The way you manage an autoimmune condition is when a patients come in the office, I'm, I tell them, I'm not treating you for any, any symptom. My job is not to treat you for any symptoms. Symptoms are just telling the boss is telling me that something's not right something's in your wrong. body. Mm -hmm. One of your systems is not right. What system is not working? Let's go after and work on the system. When you fix the system, magically 10, 20 of your symptoms go away. Go away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's about working on your sim on, on your systems. Um, and when it comes to to thyroid, yeah, a lot of it's going to be diet and lifestyle. It really is. Stress management's gonna be huge. And one thing I do wanna add, if a person does have Hashimoto's. Um, you really, you have to be careful, like uh, armor is prescribed quite often, but armor has cornstarch in it. Mm -hmm. um, cornstarch, you know, if you have gluten, you're almost like precipitating the thyroid attack with the medication that you're on. Oh my gosh. So that's where you have to find, well, maybe nature thyroid works better for me. You know, maybe that T4, T3 combo, maybe a, something that's compounded works for better for me. I've had patients at time that they separately take a T4 um, um, tyrosine and then they also take, um, you know, cytomel. They'll just take T3. They, um, they take two separate ones. So it's really individualized and customized. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's not something that it's so easily figured out. I wish it was easy, mm -hmm. but, but it's not, you know, it, it's really about, like I said, looking at the whole picture. So bottom line is, you know, if you suspect you have a thyroid issue, get the proper testing done. Okay. Even if you can't get the proper testing done, clean up your diet. That's the number one thing that you can do. Optimize your digestion. I always call it the trifecta of the digestion is your hydrochloric acid, your enzymes, and even probiotics. Okay. If you have um, gut issues, you're going to have to get those checked out. Otherwise you will probably have other issues, even, um, cardiovascular issues have been linked to the gut as well. So we've got to fix, you have to address the gut. You, you just cannot go about and, and you just can't. Just in my opinion, that's what I've seen in my practice. It's and even with mind, hormones. <laughs> no, it's mind blowing that the gut 
has such an impact everywhere in the body. And yet, like you mentioned before, for traditional medicine, there is not such a push to understand the impact on the gut. And so I'm so happy. I'm so glad that I'm able to, you know, do these um, podcasts with you. And I'm, I'm learning because everything that I can use for uh, improving patients' health and, you know, overall mm -hmm. well-being. I mean, it's amazing. And anybody that has been listening yeah. to the podcast, if you have hypothyroidism, I can't imagine the value that you just received. Yeah. And there's something on my website. They can go on and get, um, I have a free ebook that kind of like in a synopsis tells you about, you know, what are some things maybe your doctor's missing, your practitioner's missing. You can see the, um, you know, what are the labs that I order, some of the ranges in there, because sometimes, you know, if you go and the doctor's like, I know your labs are normal, you know, yeah, but I, I don't feel good, you know, so um, I do have in there, you know, you know, how do you go about that? And I know pretty soon, you know, we have had some online programs for that. And we're, I'm in the process of, of switching some things up, making it more easier for, for patients to be able to, to follow. So, you know, they can stay tuned to that and just get our, get the free ebook that we do have available. And that's really a good start. You know, we do have information on our website. So, you know, we're continuously um, uploading that. And of course, with videos that we have from YouTube and so forth. So yeah, there's, th this is, this is my, I always say, I, I, I love this part. I love the hormones. I love gut health. I love thyroid, anything that has to do with, you know, just taking care of your body, taking care of your health, because when you feel good, you're actually, I always tell people, when you take care of you, you're taking responsibility for you. But in essence, you're changing the world with that, too. It's harder for you to be mean to people when you're in such a good mood and life is great and you feel amazing. It's it's just like you want everybody to feel like that. Right. But when you're when you're not feeling good, it's just like everyone is like, you know, everyone's doing everything wrong. <laughs> Yeah, it affects your entire life. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. That's awesome that you have that uh, book, that those resources, www.drlindamarcus.com for anybody, right? Yes, yes. They can That's go awesome. on there and, you know, we give some guidelines there. Awesome. Anything else before we go? No, I think, um, I think we covered a lot. Um, I was just, you know, I, I, you covered a lot as well. Um, just the importance, like we talked about the liver, the gut, and um, a lot of it just comes down to, you know, what are, what are we putting? And we keep just emphasizing, emphasize. I know we sound like a broken record, but it's really about what are you putting in your body? What are you putting in your body? What are you putting in your mouth? You know, that's so important. Food is everything. Food is food is the most powerful. They say it could be the most powerful uh, medicine or drug out there, you know, because, um, well, Twinkies are considered food, but that's not. That could be a drug because of all the sugar in there. <laughs> but it really is a powerful medicine, you know, with the genetic, um, the way your, your DNA is going to be expressed um, because of what you're eating. So, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. Uh, with that. Uh, we're going to finish the podcast. I hope you guys found it so interesting and amazingly informative like I did. I, I was taking notes and I learned so much. I think I'm going to have to listen to it like three more times. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. All right. We'll see you. See you next week. Bye. Bye.